Hey, this is Horner. We're going to talk about section 10.6, using the law of conservation of energy. Uh, remember the law of conservation of energy just says that all of the energy within a system should always be the same at the beginning and then at the end of a situation that's happening within that system. So we can transfer energy back and forth um, and that work is equal to the sum of all those energies in a system. Uh, in an isolated system, there should be no work done at all because there's no work going in or out. And so we say that the energy before should be equal to the energy after, and that is the law of conservation of energy. Um, if I want to choose an isolated system, I can do a lot of different things. They show you some different uh, examples here of different isolated systems. So I'll let you take a look at those and read through those. Let's take a look at example or a quick check 10.18. It says a spring-loaded gun shoots a plastic ball with a launch speed of 2 meters per second. If the spring was compressed twice as far, the ball's launch speed would be what? So you have to remember this is the potential energy of a spring. So that's equal to 1 half kx squared. Um, and remember, we are taking this energy and we're converting it to kinetic energy, which is equal to 1 half mv squared. And those are our two things that are happening in our, in our problem. So we're going to say that the potential energy before should be equal to the kinetic energy after. So we're going to have 1 half kx squared is equal to 1 half mv squared. We can get rid of the halves. And now we want to find out what v is. So we want to find v. Let's go ahead and solve for V. So V would be equal to, and if I want V by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by M. So this would be KX squared all over M. And this is squared, so we need to do the square root of both sides. And so here's our equation. This would be equal to, now we know that K doesn't change. We're going to call it 1. So this is really just X squared over M. And uh, now it says if the spring is compressed twice as far, so that would be 2x squared. So that would be 2 squared, which is 4. And m doesn't change, so we're not worried about it. And if 2 squared is 4, square root of 4 is 2. So that would give us 2 times the original speed. So 2 times 2 would give us 4, and that should be the answer. And that is from the conservation of energy. So I conserved energy when I compress the spring. Uh, that All that energy comes into the speed or the kinetic energy. So if I double x, I've got a double v. Um, and that's probably a little bit easier way to see it than what I did. Uh, mine is a little bit longer, a little bit more thorough, but that's a pretty quick way to do it. For 10.19, a spring-loaded gun shoots a plastic ball with a launch speed of 2. If the spring is replaced with a new spring, having twice the spring constant, the ball's launch speed will be, and this one's going to be 2.8. So it's not double, and it's because if you notice the k here uh, is not squared. So if I double k, I go, I'm going to increase the speed by the square root of 2. So I only will uh, just increase that speed by the square root of 2, and that's 10.19. I do have a car sitting at the top of a hill, so this is our example problem. A small push sends it rolling down the hill. After its height is dropped by 5 meters, it's moving pretty quickly. Uh, write down an equation for the conservation of energy, Notice, uh, noting the choice of a system, the initial and final states, and what energy transformation has taken place. So let's do that. We're going to do... Um, it says uh, conservation of energy. So we're going to have different energies transformed here. We're at the top of the hill, so I know I've got potential energy at the top of the hill. Um, we're going to talk about the kinetic energy at the top of the hill, and that should be all the energies that you have. That's going to be equal to the potential energy uh, at, at the bottom, so we're going to put potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. Um, so here we go. This would be mgh at the top plus 1 half mv squared at the top, but this is equal to 0. And then that's equal to mgh at the bottom plus 1 half m 
V squared. So what I've done here is I've taken potential energy and I've converted some of it into kinetic and then the rest of it stays potential. So it's dropped by five meters um, and it probably could still be going down the hill is what we're saying at this point. So it's gone down the hill but it's gone down about five meters. Maybe the hill's a little bit taller and so it still has some energy that it can lose from potential into that kinetic. And that's kind of how you want to look at this system. Uh, the next one says a child slides down a slide at a constant speed of 1.5 meters per second. The uh, height of the slide is 3 meters. Write down an equation for the conservation of energy, noting the choice of the system, the initial and final states, and what energy transformation has taken place. So here we've got a, a, a kid uh, going down a slide. Our V here is constant at 1.5 meters per second. So notice there's no change in kinetic energy. There is a height of the slide, and the height of the slide here, whoops, it's not V, it's H. The height of the slide is equal to 3 meters. So we know that it has MGH at the top. Uh, at the bottom, it does not have any potential energy. So this is potential energy due to gravity at the top. It does have some kinetic energy uh, at the top, uh, and that's equal to zero because it's not moving. Once it starts to move, we say it quickly goes to this velocity, so the kinetic energy at the bottom is equal to um, whatever the child's mass is times this squared uh, times a half. So we do have some kinetic energy at the bottom, and that would just be 1 half mv squared at the bottom. And so some of our potential energy here uh, is being converted into heat. So as it travels down, because the speed is the same from the top to the bottom, okay, so at the very top it's zero, but then just shortly after that it's one half mv squared, but it's constant. So it's the same as the energy that you have at the bottom. So the only energy that's being given off here is thermal energy. So I'm going to put ETH. So we're taking potential energy due to gravity at the top and we are make, and uh, we also have kinetic energy at the top once it starts to move and that should be equal to uh, there's no potential at, at the bottom but there is thermal energy it's hot plus the kinetic energy at the bottom which is equal to the kinetic energy at the top. So it's the same thing. That's the second example problem. Uh, so now we've got an example where we can use a little bit of math. While at the country fair, Katie uh, tries the water slide. The shape just looks like this. Starting point is nine meters above the ground. She pushes off with an initial speed of two meters per second. If the slide is frictionless, how fast will Katie be traveling at the bottom? So to do this one, we need to uh, kind of think about the energy. So we know the final kinetic energy uh, plus the potential energy uh, due to gravity that's at the bottom should be equal to the original kinetic plus the original gravitational potential energy. We're going to go ahead and put those into the equation. So you'll see each one of them here. And now we can go ahead and start to solve. Since our final height is zero, okay, we're going to say that there is no MGY here anymore. There's no more final potential energy. We know we have 1 half MVF squared is equal to 1 half MVI uh, squared plus MGY times, uh, sorry, MG times that initial height. Notice that we don't worry about the masses here. All the masses cross off. If the masses cross off, you can rearrange the equation and you end up with the final speed is equal to the square root of the original speed squared plus 2 times gravity times the original height. Plug everything in and you do get 13 meters per second. So the shape of the slide does not matter because the gravitational potential energy only depends on the height and we did not have any energy loss due to friction in this one. Uh, 10.13 is the next one. Monica pulls her daughter Jessie in a bike trailer. The trailer and Jessie together have a mass of 25. Monica starts up a 100 meter long slope that's 4 meters high on the slope. Monica's bike pulls on the trailer with a constant force of 8. They start at the bottom of the slope with a speed of 5.3. They want to know what's their speed at the very top of the slope. So here's kind of a picture showing you what's going on. 
our original height is 0, our final height is 4, our original velocity is 5.3, we want to know what is that final velocity. So this is what we don't know yet. Uh, we do know 25 kilograms is our mass, that won't change, the force is 8 newtons, that won't change, and the distance that we travel is 100 meters. Uh, the equation that we're going to use in this one is the final energy, so the total final energy should be equal to the original final energy plus any work that's done. And so we can go ahead and write out the equation like this, where we do 1 half MVF squared plus MGYF is equal to 1 half MVI squared plus MGYI plus work. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to say that the original height is zero, and we know that work is equal to force times distance. Uh, if we rearrange the equation that we had previously, so if we go back and we want to arrange this, we're going to say that this is force times distance here. Okay. Um, we know that uh, we don't worry about any friction, so we're, that's all gone. And we know that our original, um, oh shoot, let's go back. We know that our uh, original, here we go, uh, we know that our original height is zero. So let's go back to what we were doing. Our original height here is equal to zero. So we've got work going in to getting her up the hill, uh, no, no energy here. And so what we can do is we're going to leave the FD here. We're going to take the Ys and we're going to factor them out. So let's go ahead and move this to the left side. So we have 1 half MVF squared plus MGY final minus 1 half MV original squared is equal to F times D. If you factor out the M, you can divide it by both sides. So now we have 1 half VF squared minus 1 half MV original squared is equal to FD over m, and then we can factor out the half, and then we can solve for our final velocity at the top. If you do that, you should end up with this equation, which is the final velocity squared is equal to original velocity squared minus 2 times gravity times the final height, plus 2 times force times distance all over the mass. Plug all your numbers in. And then when you solve for VF, notice that this is VF squared, so we have to take the square root of it. You get 3.7 meters per second. Um, if we assess it, that's about 8 miles an hour. That's pretty reasonable for a bicycle speed. And that would be your good, uh, that'd be your answer. For energy conservation, uh, we said kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Gravitational potential is stored in uh, the object's height, and elastic potential is stored energy with a stretch or compressed spring or a piece of rubber or just anything that's elastic. And so that's energy and its conservation. We also said uh, that the law of conservation of energy shows us in an isolated system the final energy should be equal to the initial. Uh, we did not talk about thermal energy, so we're not going to worry about it. And that is the end of section 10.6 and the end of energy and work.